Let's take a look at the new listings for this year. Which companies are you expecting to be listed at the market? Well, for us as an exchange, we hope that we can have anywhere between four and five listings every year. Um, and you'll know, of course, that a couple of companies have already made public their intention to list um, CIC Insurance and Deacons and Longhorn. And we expect that those listings will take place any time within this quarter or in quarter two. Now, Peter, there are plans by the NAC to deepen financial markets. What products are you looking at that you want to introduce in this market? The most exciting uh, new product for us is um, a market segment for mid-sized companies, what we are calling the growth enterprise market segment. We expect that this uh, will be up and running in the course of this year. The regulatory framework has been developed. Uh, it's been agreed between ourselves and the regulator and is now awaiting a gazettement by the Minister for Finance. And once that is done, we shall be able to uh, then uh, formally launch this new market segment, which we hope will be uh, very useful in terms of developing um, young and ambitious companies with plans for growth that would also be attractive for investors. Moving on, last year we had the launch of the FTSE NSC Kenya Index Series. What effect has this had on the performance of the market? The partnership with FTSE is one that uh, we value. Um, we think that having FTSE branded, FTSE NSC branded indices is good for our market. As you know, FTSE is a leading global provider of, of index and in index related services. And they have you know, a huge uh, market out there of funds and managers who track performance of their portfolios against FTSE indices. So we are now exposing our market to that larger uh, investment uh, group and we are also looking forward to launching uh, a bond index with FTSE uh, this year. And do you have timelines for this? This should happen uh, early in Q2. Moving on Peter, please give us an update on the demutualization process. Where are we at the moment? Well, uh, demutualization fortunately is back on track. We have made a lot of progress. I think it's fair to say we are now in the final stages of the process. We had uh, an extraordinary general meeting of our shareholders uh, this month, and they elected a new board of directors. Uh, those names have been submitted to the regulator uh, for their approval, uh, or rather for their no objection, uh, that these individuals are fit and proper to serve on the board of uh, securities exchange. What remains, I think, is now for the regulator to gazette regulations for demutualization and for us to file a formal uh, application for approval uh, pursuant to those regulations. A lot of what we were supposed to have done to complete this demutualization process has already happened. We have re-registered the company. We've converted it from a company limited by guarantee to one limited by shares. We've changed the name of the company. We have new memorandum and articles. We have a new board. Um, so a lot of the changes have already uh, taken place. And we are really now in the last leg of this process. Now, it's been a good week for Kenya following the discovery of oil. What effect do you think this will have on Kenya's economy? Well, I think it's uh, very good news uh, for the economy if uh, the oil that has been found is in commercially viable quantities and, and, and so on because obviously we know that oil producing countries have a huge advantage. It's a huge resource to have. And I think for this country it has come at the right time because we have a democratic uh, culture that has taken root we have developed institutions which should help us uh, to really harness the blessings of oil as opposed to oil turning into a curse, which it has done in other parts of, of the world. Moving on, Peter, what's your outlook for 2012, considering that in 2011 the market shed almost a third of its value? Are you optimistic about recovery? Yes, I am. Uh, I think this year has started off uh, better than last year ended. Last year's performance is understandable when you look at the prevailing uh, conditions at the time. Uh, we had inflation uh, rising, interest rates rising as a result, we had exchange rate volatility, um, we had the 
military action in Somalia, Operation Linda Inchi, and all these, uh, together with what was happening globally, were reflected in the performance of the market. But looking forward, all the fundamentals, all the indicators are getting better. Uh, inflation should come down, interest rates are trending downwards, the exchange rate has stabilized, uh, we have now discovered oil. So the view of investors uh, of this as they look at this economy, I think, has improved considerably and we expect that to filter through in the valuations. With regards to elections, there are some who say the polls should be held in December this year, while the IABC has gone ahead and confirmed March 4th in 2013. What effect might this have on the markets due to this uncertainty? When you look at the reforms that have been carried out, whether it's a new constitution or administrative reforms or uh, electoral reforms, the underlying political risk has, has reduced uh, enormously. Having said that, election years are usually exciting because there's a lot of electioneering going on. Um, and the uncertainty as regards the date of the election in itself, first of all, markets don't like uncertainty. Uh, so it would be better if we knew for a fact when the date of the election is going to be. But having said that, I think anyone who knows the history of this country and where we are coming from will appreciate the fact that the political space has opened up so much that the date of the election is a topic for discussion by everyone and everyone has a view. And fundamentally, I think that's a good development.